a few more thoughts on the concept of integrity and deceit. So one of the reasons why do we end up believing the lies and kind of touched a little bit upon it in terms of not being aware of the word, not being aware of truth, not being aware of God's good attributes, and then also not being self-aware. Because if you're not aware of the physiological and psychological response in yourself, and then is that in alignment with God, Jesus, and the truth, that is one reason that you fall into deceit and betrayal and lies. Another reason would be you're not thinking all the way through. And so you convince yourself that a lie is actually the truth. You convince yourself that it actually is God's good nature and it is God's good will. So for instance, let's say you do something that you really, really don't want to do. And it, you go out of your way to help somebody when they when they call. And you do that. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing to do. However, you don't voice your concerns on the immediacy, the expectation of you dropping everything you're doing, the time of day, the timing of it. You don't voice your concern. And so the person doesn't know. And so they ask you again. And the same thing happens. You smile, you do the nice deed, but then you don't voice your concern. And so the action of doing the nice deed, that is in itself, God, uh, I would say, a, an attribute of God. That is a good thing to do. You know, sacrifice yourself or for other people. However, what isn't good is your intention, your heart posture, your mind. I'm not saying you shouldn't get frustrated. I think that's a that's a reasonable response and, and say my boundaries aren't being respected. I, I love going out of my way to help. However, I feel like the boundaries weren't expected. Please next time understand that I may not be able to to do this and voicing how you feel. And I think the reason we don't do that is because sometimes, like I was saying, the the truth can the truth can hurt because it because it pierces because when you're told a truth that you're not aware of, a little piece of you realizes, whoa, I've by definition wasn't even aware of a truth and I was living in some sort of lie of some kind. And not to and we just put so much negative connotation on that as we should. But I think that's that's why that initial kind of truth, hard truth about something, about ourselves, is we realize that, wow, I thought this was right, which is synonymous with truth, but it was actually wrong, which is synonymous with, with lies and deceit. And so when we, when we find that out, the enemy makes one last attack because God has pierced it, truth has pierced it. So the enemy makes one last attack by making you go to anger or, or control or or some other negative emotion defensive to try to prove yourself right, which is, one, you think you're trying to act in God's will, but you're actually, the enemy is trying to put that doubt into your head, try to put that deceit into your head that, no, you were living in the truth because the enemy doesn't want you to leave that deceit. And I think then that defense and that anger spreads like a seed if the other person isn't mature in that moment or maybe they're not well rested or, or maybe they're triggered or maybe they're living in a lie themselves. And then these things start to to escalate rather than kind of slowing down and in remembering what love actually is because that's that's the other thing is – it says God is love, and that's one of the attributes. So God is is truth, but God is also love. And so that would mean that if it's all an attribute of God, then at some level, they are the one and the same. Love is truth, and truth is love. And so what does the Bible say love is? It says it's patient, kind, humble, gentle. And so you it's hard, a lot easier said than done, but humbling yourself and trying to be imbued in love and truth, that is what stops the escalation.
because I'm trying to be I'm trying to be patient. I'm trying to listen and feel God's presence, the Holy Spirit, and I'm trying to make sure the enemy is attacks in those moments because the, the attacks in the moments don't go away. You just get better at being self-aware of them when they're happening and you're better equipped to deflect it and, and work around it to stay imbued in God's love and truth. So I think that's why it's so hard sometimes to live fully out in integrity because you you don't look far enough. You're like, oh, if I don't say it, I avoid this confrontation. And then we all know eventually at the end of that roadblock, something blows up and it, and it goes. And then the truth always wins in the long run. And it always surfaces because God is good and the truth always prevails in the long run. And that's why eventually if you don't confront the truth early, that you're just delaying the suffering and you're delaying the pain of getting back to the truth because you're separating yourself further and further from it, which by definition, if God is truth, you're separating yourself further and further and further with intimacy with God. And so that distance to try to get back to him is painful. And so that's why delayed confrontation is not God's will.